The fact that these big girls are getting hotter, wetter, and blowing harder than we ever thought possible is a weird sciencey fact that unfortunately boggles my mind. And that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Now, it's been a little over a week since Hurricane Milton was the second massive hurricane to pummel southern states while they were still recovering from Helene just weeks earlier. And two hurricanes reaching Category 5 strength back-to-back, -back, trucking along the same path would have been an impossibility just a decade or two ago. And you see, this should be impossible because hurricanes like their bath water warm. In fact, for hurricanes to even form, the surface temperature of the water needs to be a balmy 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And the warmer it is, the stronger they get. The hurricanes suck up hot water vapor off the surface of the ocean and as that water vapor condenses all of that heat is released into the storm and heat is energy it's power the more heat that that storm can suck up the stronger it'll get but the silver lining has always been that once a big storm like that passes through it draws up all the colder water from down deep and the surface temperature cools down a lot and this always meant that while well, you could get pummeled by one really bad storm coming at you from the same direction you had a little time to recover because any storm that followed had a lot cooler water to draw power from and just couldn't get as strong. So what changed? It allowed something named Milton to be menacing. Because let's be real, that should have never happened. Well, we already know the answer to that. It's a global conspiracy. A cabal of the rich and powerful vase from around the world, you know, Saudi Arabia and Russia and China and the United States. They've spent decades conspiring how to continually increase their wealth, power, and influence by exploiting our natural resources, our people, and poisoning our planet. And since we know from hurricanes that energy is power, the people who control the energy around the world also wield the most power. And they've used that power to make sure that the energy that they control doesn't lose its value and therefore its power. And to make sure that the energy they control maintains its value and them their power, it requires continuous pumping of unfathomable amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which warms our planet. And since the oceans just happen to be part of the planet, when a hurricane like Helene passes over them, now instead of drawing up cold water from the deep, it's drawing up warm water from the deep. And that's because the oceans have a absorbed 94% of all of this excess heat caused by this global conspiracy. Now, I know this conspiracy seems super far-fetched and obscure, and you probably haven't even heard about it unless you've seen one of the countless news articles or documentaries or movies about it from the past, I don't know, 50 years, or heard something from one of the, you know, very few 99.9% .9 of the scientific community whistleblowers uh, who's told us about it. Or, you know, if you just haven't, like, gone, gone outside ever. And to be fair, there's some skeptics, rightfully so, of this conspiracy. And there's competing theories, you know, like that one dude posting videos on YouTube from his mom's basement who has secret information about how the Democrats have a weather machine and they're using it to hurt Republicans and help Obama win a third term or something, which sounds equally as plausible. Anyway, back to the hurricanes. Now, as devastating as these storms are, it is sad to say that they are a footnote in this story. And they are just a tiny symptom of the problem, but they tell a massive story about what's currently happening and the devastation that will come. Because we've been missing the boat on this in a lot of ways for a long time, and we still are, because when we talk about climate change, we talk about air temperature. But the oceans really have absorbed 94% of all of the excess heat caused by climate change. And because the ocean is massive, absorbing all of that heat, it has borrowed us a lot of time to address climate change before we suffered the worst effects of it. The thing about borrowed time like borrowed anything is you got to pay it back and you got to pay it back with interest. Now I procrastinate with the best of procrastinators but when it comes to making payment on that debt we've done pretty much the most American thing we could do and procrastinated to the point of defaulting. Now you see we had this really great interest rate worked out with the oceans early on. COVID level mortgage rates type interest. It allowed us to ramp up civilization through the industrial revolution burning as much fossil fuels as we wanted. It gave us the time to develop more sustainable energy technology. That would have been the big payments on that debt we borrowed and the interest rates would have stayed low because the ocean would have released that heat back into the atmosphere gradually and we would have never have noticed. But this was an adjustable rate mortgage with a balloon and we didn't make any of those payments when the interest rates were low. And now we're getting all kinds of hidden fees and charges we didn't even think about. Like, you know, the ocean's dying, which is kind of a major ecological problem. And we're getting all these crazy storms and droughts and floods and fires, record setting heat waves every year. But here's the thing, where the ocean was our friend before when we took out this loan, it's now the loan now, no matter what we do, it is going to make us feel some pain for 
not making our payments. Because even if we stopped using fossil fuels tomorrow, which, you know, isn't going to happen because we're still emitting it at record levels, and even if we manage to get rid of enough carbon in the atmosphere tomorrow to stop global warming's acceleration, the ocean is still holding all of that heat debt, and it will keep releasing it into our atmosphere for probably a decade or more after we completely stop actively warming the planet. I do want to say, though, a, a little bit of silver lining irony that fits really well with this analogy I've gotten way out of hand on. The wealthy assholes who cause these problems, their houses are literally being swallowed by the ocean in places like Florida and California. Fitting with my analogy, the ocean is foreclosing on their shit. The ocean is eating the rich, or at least their houses. Unfortunately, it's still fucking poor people around the world over far, far worse because they don't have their ski house and veil to escape to when their beach mansion falls into the ocean. But you know, you gotta take your little victories where you can get them. Anyway, I know this sounds all gloom and doom and bleak, and it is, but there is still a light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's fucking dim, but it's there. If we start making real measurable change right now, we can save ourselves from the worst effects of climate change, which is, you know, extinction. This is a mass extinction event. There's no two ways about it. We are a mass extinction event, but it doesn't have to be. If we put in the resources and energy we put into, to, you know, fixing the hole in the ozone layer and putting a man on the moon and splitting the atom, we can stop this train before it completely goes off the rails. I mean, it's still going to be a bumpy ride, but we just might survive it. So remember to vote and vote right now like the world depends on it because you can and it does. And the fact that hot water can hail hellacious hurricanes like Helene and humans still hesitate to stop harming our home, that is depressingly fucking mind-boggling.